Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hey, I wanted to do a follow-up on the last video that I did, and that's really putting the, the LSA heat exchanger and intercooler pump on. Uh, I did some things, I've got it all cleaned up. So, I wanted to go through that with you today and just do a quick video on how we tidy things up and how it actually worked out. Plus, I kind of wanted to go over with you how I bled uh, the LSA and, or burped uh, the LSA coolant as well. So, let's get right to it. Right. First thing is we went ahead and put the cover back on. So stock cover. Now this hole here, I used to have this in there so it was a nice access, but I had to get rid of that and move it back over here because of the heat exchanger. So got the heat exchanger all in there and I got this thing all buttoned up. So got that all set. So that's the first thing. The next thing is I've got all the hoses with some nice loom on it to help prevent from chafing and that sort of thing. Plus it just kind of cleans it up. So you can see here, I've got all that all set up, which turned out really nice. Now what I did here was I really just followed along the AC lines and the heater hoses. So this ended up being kind of my hose highway, if you will, quote, quote. <laughs> Um, so I kind of like it. Uh, at first I wasn't exactly sure if I liked it or not just because there's so many hoses, but honestly, between AC heater and now the LSA blower lid, there's going to be six hoses that have to run somewhere. So I kind of wanted to keep them all together here. And then I got these nice Earl's three quarter inch hose separators, uh, and they really kind of clean things up here, right? And just to kind of remind you, this here is my electric uh, diverter valve for the heater hose. So I've got a knob in the car that this helps in the AC in the summertime by keeping the coolant from inside of the heater core. So really cool thing there. I've got another video on that. But again, I this again we've got the LS3 here, and we've got this hose that's essentially looped in. So let me kind of get in here and show you that. Just kind of pull it out. So it's looped. So my idea really is once I put the lid on and put the blower on, then we'll go ahead, clamp the end of those hoses, cut it, put it on the lid, as I've mentioned. So pretty cool. And again, I just kind of ran it along my hose area here. Um, so I think it turned out pretty good. Now, in terms of the routing of the hoses, I could have actually ran them through the fender and then come out over here. So that was one option, but I would have had to put a couple 90s right here. And I just don't want to restrict the flow anymore. So in this case, I kind of went form over function. Probably doesn't make a lot of difference, but I went ahead and just made a call with that. We'll see how it goes. I think right now, the, the hoses kind of stand out because they're just kind of looped and they're kind of high here. Once we have the blower there, and that's really gonna be the centerpiece of this whole thing, <laughs> I think the, the hoses will be the last thing you really notice. I went ahead and burped the system. And from my understanding, I watched a bunch of videos on this, but my understanding is once you have a tank and it's pretty much higher than everything else you just run the system and it was true like most of the bubbles came right out so the bubbles kind of came out it ran very nice the only i saw just a very few little little tiny bubbles once i went through that whole process but the pump wasn't didn't have any cavitation problems in other words a big air bubble in the system so I'm pretty sure I got all the air out of this thing because it just runs super good. The pump runs nice. I saw just little bitty tiny bubbles, but I think that's just aerating when I have this off. 
and this pump is pumping it back on. So let me go ahead and turn the key on and I'll give you a sort of a demonstration of that. So let's go ahead and turn the key on and remember that's what I have triggering the relay for the pump. So ignition on is really gonna start the pump. You can hear the fuel pump. All right, so let's go back over to the engine. You can hear it, maybe. Pretty quiet. And you can see here, we have a beautiful thing. No bubbles. And the deck's cool is flowing through, baby. That's awesome. I am so excited about this. I've been planning this for a while, and especially because the pump in the harness was on back order from Lingenfelter. You know, it was just, I just thought about it a lot and was just hoping this whole thing worked out according to my plan, just kind of standalone. And so I'm pretty excited about how this whole thing turned out. Um, so, so basically what I did to burp the system is I just turned that on and let it run. And eventually all the air bubbles kind of cease to circulate and I feel pretty good. Again, I don't hear any cavitation of the pump where the pump is kind of hitting an air bubble or anything like that. So I feel like this thing is ready to rock, which I'm super excited. So that's all I did. Uh, the one thing I did too, and I don't know if I needed to, but I would put the cap on, run it for a couple minutes, take the cap off and let it aerate uh, or let the bubble sort of work through so I don't know. I think you could just leave the cap off and the let gravity do its thing. Gravity push the fluid down and the air comes up is really what happens there. Now on CTSVs and ZL1s where they don't have uh, any kind of tank here, they just have like a little fill uh, uh, fitting in the hose they have to go through a pretty lengthy process and come up with some crazy contraptions to get the air out of the system. For me, it was pretty easy with the tank. Just, just unscrew the lid and let gravity do its thing. So it's pretty easy. So again, really happy with this thing. It turned out pretty, the lighting is kind of terrible right now, but super happy. I got everything in and it just turned out great. And I'll take you underneath of it and kind of show you how I tidied up that as well. All right, guys, I got you under the car right here. I'm gonna to try to get you under the car here. The car's pretty low. First of all, you got this right here. Again, I got the nice loom on it, to prevent any kind of chafing. This is to the bottom of the heat exchanger. All good, tight clamped. This is the pump, super solid. Got that all set up as well. For the most part, it's all done. I got these zip tied together right here, which is kind of nice. I probably could get another one of those hose separators that I used above again. But for the most part, all this is really solid. The biggest problem, like I mentioned, is just trying to prevent kinks. And, you know, I've got this one kind of loops around right here. And I had to kind of loop it around just to prevent any kinks. So that's really the most complicated part of this install is just because all the fittings are pointed different directions, like I mentioned in my last video. Again, see this is my, right here's my radiator overflow that I, that I talked about earlier in the video. This is recessed through the battery tray. So really cool, most of it's below the battery tray, but I've, I took a hole saw and put it through it so I could access it from top. So man, I'm really excited how all this turned out. Now I'm in a good spot to start the LSA blower. So I'm gonna have that painted and I've got a few injectors to get still. From there, we might be putting this thing on in a week.
again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe if you want to see what's next on this. I'm actually going to do a couple. Of, I had a playlist called LS Swap Basics, and there's a couple of things I want to do with that as well since I'm going to be switching it over to the LSA. One of those is going to be the fuel system, and I want to walk through how I did the fuel system lines, especially, and I used the Racetronics harness, which is super nice. But I used a fourth gen tank and I wanna explain how I use all stock lines and no custom lines. So make sure you subscribe so you can kinda of see when that hits. And we'll talk to you on the flip side.